What's up? I'm Keanu, and recently I hit diamond playing only Keanu. Solo Keanu for 203 games all the way to diamond. This video is going to be a guide on how I did it, what items I used, what strategies I used, and what runes I used and stuff like that to succeed as Bruiser Keanu. Because a lot of people think Keanu can only be played as a lethality mid laner or as a jungler or something like that, but I'm here to tell you otherwise. Let's talk pros and cons. Now the first thing I want to talk about with Keanu Top is her fucking ridiculous laning phase. With Conqueror, she has extremely strong all-in. I cannot stress enough how strong her all-in is. It's insane. Darius, she beats him. Alawi, she beats her. Mordekaiser, she beats him. Hell, if Kiana had a wife who went top lane, she'd beat the fuck out of her too. She is ruthless. Playing Kiana top is all about taking opportunities that you see to all-in and getting solo kills. Once you get these solo kills, you can transition into tower plates, roaming, invading, and TP ganks, which is when you can really blow up and snowball the game. I'll talk more about laning later when we get into a couple of her specific matchups, and I'll show some examples for that and stuff like that, but for now, let's move on to the next. The second pro is that she has really, really good side laning. With her Q and Tiamat, she has extremely good wave clear, and with her W passive, she gets a lot of damage on turrets. On top of that, Conquer Kiana is a really strong duelist. She has CC, she has a stealth, she has mobility, she has sustained damage, and she has an execute, which are all extremely strong in a 1v1 scenario. In the mid to late game, you're going to want to look to split push and draw opponents to you and gank with TP or just by finding flanks for team fights. Kiana's flanking and engage is absolutely insane. You can pretty much solo win team fights like you're Riven. This actually leads perfectly into my next pro, which is that she's a really strong team fighter. Unlike Lethality Kiana, who just blows her load and dies, Conqueror Kiana can actually get in there and deal damage for an entire team fight, and it's extremely strong. Knowing how to play around your canopy is essential for these kind of fights because it'll give you the edge that you need to really 1v9 the game. The last pro is that she scales incredibly well. Lethality Kiana as well as most assassins tend to fall off late game, but Bruiser Kiana just doesn't. I found myself actually wanting to play Bruiser Kiana way more than Lethality and finding it more fun because it felt more rewarding to crush my lane and to actually win off of my leads instead of win lane lose game. Plus, this helps a lot if you fell behind in lane. You can actually farm and scale up through splitting to become relevant in the game again once you get 3 items, which is not a privilege that Lethality Kiana has. So that's what's good about Bruiser Kiana, now let's talk about some of its biggest flaws. The biggest flaw of Kiana top lane, bar none, is the fact that she has just some shitty, unplayable matchups. Two perfect examples would be Kled and Renekton. Picking Kiana into Kled or Renekton when you go the Bruiser build should just be a bannable offense. You're, you're practically fucking trolling at that point. There is literally nothing you can do to these people. You'll get smacked in lane, you'll get dove over and over again, you won't, you'll get outscaled, you just get completely shit on. And it's to the point where it makes the pick not even worth it. If you see Kled or Renekton, you either pick a different champion or you dodge. I personally have banned Kled every game, but I'm pretty sure my win rate against Renekton is like sub 20%, it's that bad. The next con is that she's pretty bad from behind. While she does have an easier time than her Lethality counterpart, it's still not easy to play from behind. At her core, Kiana is a snowballing champion and your build's not going to change that. The third and final con is that she just doesn't leave a lot of room for mistakes. In mid lane, it's a lot harder for you to get punished for your mistakes because you can retreat to your tower a lot easier. Not only that, you have easy access to the entire map if you need to find a lead somewhere else in a bad matchup. In top lane, if you mess up a trade or get fucked over level 1 and lose your flash, it's a lot harder to come back from it. You're stuck with your laner. You can't get away from him. Even in the mid to late game, it's your job to match him most of the time. So if you fuck up, you fuck up. And your team and you will fail it for the entire game. Alright, now for the part that most of you are here for. For runes, I go Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Taste of Blood, Ravenous Hunter, Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor. Conqueror is actually insane on Kiana. It's what fuels the entire build. Conqueror actually synergizes really well with Kiana's kit. Being able to stack it up off of your auto attacks from passive W, leading into the execute for your Q, is really, really strong. And of course, it's just an insane late game rune. Triumph will save your ass in a lot of clutch situations and Alacrity is really nice for stacking up your Conqueror and synergizes really well with your W passive. Coup de Gras is obvious because of your Earth Gear. For the secondary tree, I typically take Ravenous Hunter and Taste of Blood for most games, but in certain situations, some of the other trees can come in clutch. Against heavy magic damage teams, I highly recommend taking Null Orb and Transcendence. It's really, really strong for the CDR, and I think Null Orb is just fucking broken. In some of your hard matchups, like Renekton or Urgot, it can be really useful to take Resolve Tree and go Bone Plating Second Wind to help you survive lane. You can also go this route against Teemo just to make him even more useless, but that matchup's free anyway. Finally, Corrupting Pot and Biscuits will probably be good every game in the same way that Ravenous Hunter and Taste of Blood is, but I personally prefer Ravenous Hunter and Taste of Blood. That is purely preference. If you prefer Time Warp Tonic and Biscuits, more power to you, it's just as good. For your starting items, most of the time you're going to want to take Corrupting Pot. 
But D Shield and Longsword can also be good. D Shield's good against matchups like Teemo or like Urga and Renekton, like I said before. And Longsword's really good if you need to rush your team at as soon as possible. For core build that I usually go every single game, it's Black Cleaver into Tiamat, into Death Stance or Drakthar, and then the other one, and then situational items. Cleaver is just insane on Kiana as a first item for a power spike because it helps her in lane against some of those tankier opponents, and it shreds armor for her execute. Now this is a controversial opinion here, but I fucking hate Kiana without Tiamat. Without Tiamat, the champion just feels so clunky to me, so I highly recommend that if you haven't tried it, please try to buy Tiamat and learn some of the combos I'll show at the end of the video. It makes the champion feel so much better. Drakthar is really good if you just find yourself not able to burst down any squishy opponents, and Death Stance is really good if you need to sustain in fights for longer. Having both though is an insane combo. Rapid proccing Drakthar in Canopy while having DD healing is absolutely crazy for team fights, and it's so, so good in the 1v1. This combo is the bread and butter of the Bruiser Kiana. For the situational items, I typically get an LW item here, but items like Ma, QSS, GA, etc. can come in really handy. Even some really tanky items like Dead Man's Plate or Spirit Visage have a place on Kiana. Now let's talk how you should play the lane. Specifically, we're going to be talking about Darius for this example. Darius is one of those champions you'd expect to clap Kiana's cheeks in lane, but it actually goes the other way around. His passive gets hard outplayed by Canopy, and his Q gets hard outplayed by your E and W. If you play a level 3 right, there's almost no way that you should lose Darius. The fact that you can actually beat Darius in a level 3 just goes to show how strong Conquer Kiana is in lane. And finally, let's talk about some combos. The biggest mistake Lethality Kiana players have when they try to play her as a bruiser is that they throw their Q out immediately. You always want to have an element on your ring. The on-hit damage and attack speed steroid it gives you is actually nuts for trading in lane. That being said, her main combo for trading in lane is E, either Grass or Ice Q, W to grab earth, auto attack until they're low enough to execute. Sometimes the auto attack will actually take long enough for you to have your W back up, and in that case you want to double earth Q at the very end. Another general rule of thumb that's really important to note is that you always want to take two separate elements because it resets the damage on your passive. Once you get Tiamat though, that's when this character gets really fucking fun. Using Tiamat can animation cancel your W, and it animation cancels the end of your E. Pretty much, you want to build the muscle memory to where you press your Tiamat key right after E almost every time. An ultless Tiamat combo would be something like Q E Tiamat W Autos Q. As you can see, that shit looks clean and it feels even cleaner. Another big mistake that I see a lot of Kiana players make is that they E ult instead of ult Eing. R and then E will actually make your combos a lot faster and a lot smoother. Combining that with Tiamat will give you some of the cleanest one shots and cleanest engages that you'll ever see. Your Tiamat and ult combo should look something like. Alt E, Tiamat Q, W, Autos, and then Q. If your opponent took enough damage from the first half of the combo, then you don't need to auto attack, you can just Q, W, Q. There's a lot more combos that you can use situationally, but you'll figure them out as you play the game. These are just a couple to get you started. The last tip, but certainly not the least, is practice alt flash angles. During the windup of your ult, you can actually flash to change the direction that it goes, very similar to Lux's bind or Ari's charm. Combining that with your E and Tiamat can make some of the cleanest, flashiest plays that you'll ever see. That just about wraps up my Bruiser Kiana Top Guide. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the guide or found it useful, then drop a like. I'd love to do full gameplay commentaries or something like that too, so if you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment if you want to see it. I'll also be leaving a link to my Twitter below if you want to tweet at me showing me how well you've been doing with the new build. That's also the best place to contact me if you have any questions, and I'm really, really active on my Twitter if you want to see clips and stuff. I should also mention that I didn't really have a script for this, I just had bullet points. So if it felt like I was rambling or, you know, stumbling over myself, that's why. I just can't read a script. It, I sound so fucking fake and weird. It's just not right. Thanks for watching. I've been Keanu, and I hope you guys find as much success as I have playing Bruiser Keanu Top.